Joints can be classified structurally based on their anatomical characteristics and functionally based on the type of movement that they permit. The structural classification of joints is based on two criteria, the presence or the absence of a space between the articulating bones called a synovial cavity, which is this part here, with the articulating bones being this one here and here, and then the type of connective tissue that binds the bones together. Using this structural classification, joints are classified as one of three types. A fibrous joint, which has no synovial cavity and the bones are held together by dense irregular connective tissue. A cartilaginous joint, which also has no synovial cavity and the bones are held together by cartilage. And a synovial joint, which does contain a synovial cavity, and the bones of the joint are connected by dense irregular connective tissue of an articular capsule, also known as a joint capsule, and is this fibrous structure we see on either side here. Now the functional classification of joints relates to the degree of movement that that joint permits. Functionally, joints are also classified as one of three types. We have a sine arthrosis, which is a joint that is immovable, an amphiarthrosis, which is a joint that is slightly movable, and a diarthrosis, which is a joint that is freely movable. Now, for the remainder of this module, we will focus on the structural classification of joints. However, each joint will have both a structural and a functional classification. So starting with our fibrous joints, and a fibrous joint lacks a synovial cavity, and the articulating bones are held really closely together by dense irregular connective tissue. Fibrous joints permit little to no movement, so are also classified functionally as an amphi or a synarthrosis. And there are three different types of fibrous joints. These are sutures, syndesmoses, and interosseous membranes. So a suture is a fibrous joint composed of a thin layer of dense irregular connective tissue. Sutures only occur between the bones of the skull. The irregular interlocking edges of a suture give them added strength and decrease their chance of fracturing. In older individuals, sutures are immovable or synarthroses but in infants and children, they are slightly movable or amphiarthroses, which is really important for as long as their heads and their brains are still growing. So a suture is this structure here. You can see that irregular edge along here. And in a slightly zoomed in image of a, a suture in a child, this is that suture here. A syndesmosis is a fibrous joint in which there is a greater distance between the articulating surfaces, so those two bones, and more dense irregular connective tissue surrounds the joint than in a suture. The connective tissue is typically arranged as a bundle in the form of a ligament, which limits the amount of movement at that joint. An example of a syndesmosis is the distal tibiofibular joint, which is where the anterior tibiofibular ligament connects the tibia, which is this thick bone here, to the fibula, which is the thinner bone here. This is in our lower leg. Here it permits slight movement at the ankle, and so is hence also described as an amphiarthrosis. Another example is called a gumphus, which is the joint between a tooth and the respective jawbone. In healthy teeth, this joint permits no movement. An interosseous membrane is a large sheet of dense irregular connective tissue which binds neighbouring long bones and permits very small amounts of movement. There are two main interosseous membrane joints in the human body. One occurs between the radius and the ulna, which are the two bones in our lower arm. The other occurs between the tibia, uh, sorry, tibia and our fibula in the lower leg. So this is our interosseous membrane here. 